Hi, I'm Eric Poulin. And I'm Robin Poulin. We're the co-founders of Calendar Budget, and welcome to the Calendar Budget Podcast. I can pay cash, I can pay check, I can pay wire transfer, I can pay gift card, I can pay credit, I can pay anything you like. I can pay cash, I can pay check, I can pay wire transfer, I can pay gift card, I can pay credit, I can pay anything you like. Okay, we are back. It is just before New Year's, and we wanted to take some time to talk about setting financial goals. Uh, Now, financial goals, we're not making certified financial planner suggestions for you. Uh, You'll need to meet with a financial pro to get around those things and to talk about your risk tolerance and and, and make plans for investments and those kind of things. What we're going to be talking about today is just your cash flow plans and things that are coming up in your life and making sure that you can plan for those because those are the things that are most urgent. I find most of the time those are the things that are the problems that people run into, what we have personally have run into. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what we wanted to review today. A number of steps to, or things to consider as we go through getting our financial goals in order. And when you actually set goals, you need to have a balance. It can't be all just focused on one thing, all about your health or all about your finances or all about learning a new talent or something like that. You need a balance so that you have enjoy it. You enjoy your life. So, but what we'll focus on is the cash flow. Exactly. Um, You you do want to kind of have that balance, but I find typically you'll have a focus, like something that you're just really working towards in the now. Mm -hmm. Um, Something that is like the next thing, the next big thing in your life that you're working towards. Uh, You want to make sure that you have the other things in check though, while you're working towards this next item. Mm-hmm. So as we go through these steps, just keep in mind that there does does need to be that balance, but it's not nat- normal and natural to be working towards your next big thing, whether that be a car or um, trip, eating healthier, getting a gym membership and just making sure you can afford the payments for that. Being debt free. Yeah, it could be anything, could be anything, but it all starts with figuring out where you're starting. Mm -hmm. So whenever we sit down with somebody and and kind of try to help them figure out their financial situation, what's the first thing that you do? Get them to track exactly what they're doing now so they know where they're they're starting at. It's like the Cheshire cat. Where do you want to go? Well, I don't know. That's the one end of it. You have to know where you want to be, but at the same time, you need to know where you are in order to make a plan to get from where you are to where you want to be. Yeah. Um... So tracking where you are right now means kind of gathering all of your financial situation and get a good picture of what that looks like. So that'll be any debts that you have, your you know balances of your accounts, what your current financial obligations are, meaning mm-hmm. any ongoing payments that you need to make, subscriptions or, or mortgages, rent, that kind of thing. Um, you and know, your assets a- too. Yeah, exactly. It's it's the kind of thing calendar budget is really designed. That's our forte is laying out all of those financial obligations on a calendar and you can plan it into the future. Mm -hmm. So it really gives you an idea as you're making these plans, you can just kind of move into the future and say, you know, this is what my bank account is going to look like in in five months because Mm -hmm. I know what my income and my expenses are. And if you're trying to work towards something maybe that's new and not on your plan, then you can start making some adjustments to to get there. Yeah. Yeah. So part of that financial situation, I, again, we said that's going to be your income. It'll be all of your expenses, your debts, assets. You mentioned what, what are assets just for the audience? Anything of value that you own, whether it's cash value uh, that you have in the bank already or invested in some sort of investments, or maybe it's your vehicle, your house that are have value, but aren't necessarily part of your cash flow. Yeah. So that could, you know, for some people, that's their house. Antiques. It could be art or antiques that are of value, not just trash. <laughs> Things that have saleable value. Yeah. Uh, and things that, you know, some people list their homes as big assets, but it's not like you can just sell that and then you need to live somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I consider these like saleable things. 
um, that you could you could sell and then still be able to live properly. Yes. Like if you have two vehicles, maybe you could sell one of them and still be able to function on one properly. Um, I know that you know in an actual balance sheet, you're listing every asset, whether it's saleable or not. But for purposes of this exercise, this would be things that you like. You're not going to sell your house. You need to live somewhere. <laughs> you, yeah, you, things you, you can you easily vehicle. liquidate. Exactly. Exactly. So after you've kind of figured out your financial situation and, and document that, and you can do that either on paper or in a spreadsheet or calendar budget would be our recommendation, um, simply because that's going to help you plan your future in a very simple way. Mm -hmm. Then you need to figure out what are your priorities. So what is that thing that you're looking towards and, and that balance that you talked about? So if you have several goals, maybe you have some long-term goals and some short-term goals, um, those those goals you want to make sure you have very clear. So what would be some examples of long-term goals for financial long -term planning? Long-term goals. Uh, maybe a major family trip or to purchase a house or to upgrade your vehicle because you know it's going to be getting old or you're going to outgrow it because your family's growing, whatever the reason. Yeah, it could be years down the road. Yeah. Um, and of course far down the road you, you probably have a retirement plan again we're getting into like financial planning here we're not really talking about financial planning so much as just near-term goals yeah again talk to a financial planner to talk about you know the fun the retirement goals and and the rest of your uh, investments but as you're planning for retirement though you could use calendar budget to understand what those expenses would be at that time that yeah. At this time, I we won't know. We'll no longer have mortgage payments, maybe, or we'll no longer be traveling so far to get back and forth to work and things like that. You can eliminate some of those expenses at that time in your budget because you can look forward and you can add in. Okay, we want to travel a little more, or we're going to be probably doing more activities that will cost a little more. So you can find out the balance then of what's going to happen and say ballpark figure will need about this much to live on each month yeah i think ballpark is the key word there when you're looking that far into the future it's not like you're planning the specific dollar amount like we would yeah. in a short-term goal yeah like if we're going on a vacation next year we may know that's going to cost five thousand dollars yeah and we need to save five thousand dollars whereas you know long-term retirement this is more like a trade-off between uh, reduction of income and reduction of costs and replacement of those things, balancing it for things that you want to do. It's just a kind of a rough ballpark figure. But again, your, your, your certified financial planner will help you work those out. Uh, really what we want to focus on more is these short-term goals like going on a vacation next year, yep. planning to buy a car in the next three, four years, something like that. Or even emergency savings that you definitely yeah. have that in place so that you're prepared for anything that's going to come up in the next few years. And, and in terms of priority, I'm glad you brought that up. I would suggest that before you're planning something like a vacation, that there are certain things that you should probably focus on first, emergency uh, an emergency fund would be top of the list, in my opinion. Um, make sure that you have a fully funded emergency fund before you're committing dollars towards um, the next big purchase. And then once the emergency fund is funded, then you know the money that you were putting towards the emergency fund, now you can put towards yes. whatever it is. So if you are going to set a goal for an emergency fund, how much do you set aside? That really depends. I think we've talked about that in a previous podcast, but it really depends on what your comfort level is. Mm -hmm. um, I know for you and I, we look at uh, about two to three months worth of living expenses, covering everything from um, mortgage, rent, food, any bills that need to be paid, full coverage for two to three months. A little extra miscellaneous yeah. in there. Just in case, you know, it's, it's for, there for an emergency, but... Really, that's like if you lose your job, you need to be able to function properly for a few months while you're, yeah. you know, getting a new job. Um, you need to be able to, you know, if the car breaks down, it's for those kind of emergencies that are unexpected. And depending on the industry that you're in, if you know it'll only take you a couple of weeks to find another job, still have at least two or three months in case of illness or something like that that sets in. Or even up to six months probably or a year, depending on how 
your life may be. Yeah. And we, so I said that we do two to three months. You and I do it a little differently. We, we look at how much our mortgage or rent payment is and we just, we use that number all by itself without looking at food and, and everything else. We just look at that number and say, let's make sure we've got that covered for 12 months for the coming full year. And then we know that in reality, we have to eat and we have other expenses that'll cover six to nine months of, uh, you know, of time should a big emergency happen. Yeah. But we're, that's a little overprepared. And and knowing that we're both very capable of filling in to yeah. quickly accommodate for extra income. Exactly. So, so we're a little overprepared in that respect. That's just our... Our upbringing comfort level. And, and, and comfort level, we, we want to make sure that we're okay should something bad happen. Um, and then we never have to stress about what's going to hap- happen with finances. And there's never any argument then of, hey, can we, can we, can we? Yeah. That typically ends up being a, a marital difficulty. Then finances aren't a difficulty. You're always prepared and you're able to more easily make decisions of, we want to go on vacation. We can actually do that. So let's do that. Yeah, we, we've been lucky. Um, I, I know that the, the probably the number one stress in most marriages is around money. And that really has not been much of a stress in our marriage. Yeah. Um, simply because we've we always planned. planned right from the very beginning, from yeah. before we were married. Um, yeah. We've always planned our, our finances. So yeah. it hasn't been a stress. And that's been a, a huge blessing yeah. to our married life. <laughs> Yes. It makes for happier couples. That's a good thing. Yeah. Next thing we want to make sure about is, okay, now you've got a, a goal. You kind of understand what your short-term priorities are. Maybe it's the car. Maybe it's the vacation. Maybe it's the this or that. Now it's time to set some specific goals. Now, yes. we everybody knows that goals need to be SMART goals, but just for review, what, what is a SMART goal for us? A SMART goal the, is an acronym. So SMART is... S for specific, M for measurable, A for attainable, that you can achieve. Achievable, attainable, same thing. You can achieve it. R is for, was it relevant? I thought it was for Robin. (laughs) No, it's relevant. Relevant, yeah. Yeah. So what does that mean exactly in in goal terms? Well, we should talk about what each of these words mean. Okay. And then T is for time bound, that you actually have a time frame. Yeah. So S as specific, what does specific mean in regards to a goal? So maybe you want Let, to... Let's take the example of we're going to plan for a vacation in one year. Yes. So let's set a SMART goal for that. So that vacation could be anything from going away for two days, which will cost you a small amount, or going away for a month. Maybe it's going an hour away, or maybe it's going the other side of the world. You have to be specific about what that vacation is going to look like, what costs are going to be involved with it for travel, for food, for any entertainment, and any other like uh, medical expenses, uh, insurance, and stuff like that. And anything that needs to be yeah. taken care of at home while you're away. Yeah, so a specific goal, let's just take us through the exercise. Let's say we're going to go on a cruise to the Bahamas. Okay. Bahamas? I know yeah. Caribbean. Okay, we'll go. Is it Caribbean or Caribbean? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, it's the way I say it. I always say it the both ways, just in case <laughs> I offend somebody. <laughs> Maybe um, somebody can correct us. So we'll say that our goal is we're going to go on a like all inclusive Caribbean cruise next year. So that'll be 2023. But let's make it for late November so that we can kind of avoid the holiday season Mm -hmm. that where the prices go up and we would you know we would look it up on a calendar and let's say we're going on the November the 21st I don't know what day that is but we'll just for sake of argument for 20 21st and we'll make it a five-day cruise and who are we taking just you and I are we taking the kids with let's go with the two of us okay I like that better (laughs) I'm kidding. I love my kids. I love my kids. They are actually so fun. We've done a cruise with them once. They'll be it in school super though. Fun. Yeah, exactly. So it's dif- more difficult for them to get time off Yeah. in uh, that non-off, non-peak season time. Yeah. Okay. So it's the two of us, November 21st mm-hmm. for five days mm-hmm. to the Caribbean or Caribbean. Yes. 
So would that be about $4,500 for a couple? Um, we, I mean, we would have to look that up. And it depends what cruise line you go on. If you go on Disney, yeah. if you go on Princess, if you go on the cheaper ones, they vary pretty wildly. Yeah. Um, and it depends what your what excursions you're going to be doing. So we would need to spend some time researching all that. For sake of argument, let's just put a pin in $5,000 for simplicity. Yep. And say, it's going to cost about $5,000 all in, including travel and everything. Mm-hmm. So that's our specific. Now, that's the S in smart. Now, what's M? M is measurable. How do we measure well, our goal? So actually, what is our goal? Our goal is to be on vacation as a couple. So what's our financial goal? Our financial goal, goal is the amount that that is going to cost. That would be measurable. Right. And we would need to have that because you can't just have that money on the first day of the vacation. you got to prepay for some of these things. There's usually installments yes. required. So we'd have to l- research all of that. And our goal would have to be such that we have maybe 3000 of it in June for the first installment. And then the last 2000 maybe in October to f- firm it up. Whatever the schedule is, that should be part of the specificity of SMART. Mm-hmm. Um, so we would say 5,000 in total, 3,000 on this date, 2,000 on this date, if that was the installment mm-hmm. plan. Um, and behind that, that's just the financial part of it. But mm-hmm. behind all that is like, oh, we're going to go to these places and do these things. And it has to be back, you know, backed on reality. Yeah. And you've done the research to see what the excursions are, yeah. if they're going to fit in the time frame, And exactly. Exactly. Okay, so measurable, what are we measuring here in our financial goal? Measuring, I would say the cost, since this is cash flow, this is cost. Right, so it's it's those two numbers, it's the, the 3,000 in and June the 2, and the 2,000 on this date. So we need to have those monies available, I would say, in advance of those dates, so yes. we're not scrounging and struggling at the last second. Yes. So that's the M part of measurable. It's this amount um, so we can measure it. Do we have this amount? Okay. A is achievable. So how do we, what does that mean in terms of a financial goal? Is this? Is this something that is actually going to fit in your budget? Do you have the funds free for that? Yeah. Uh, is this something you should even be considering? Do you have, are you debt, like debt bound? that you need to get rid of that debt before you even consider going on that kind of vacation. Maybe you still do need a vacation, but if it's not going to fit with your budget to spend that much money, find something less expensive that costs maybe $100 to go on a camping vacation. (laughs) Or a staycation. Staycation. Or whatever the the case may be. But that's an excellent point. The A in in SMART for achievable means, can we actually accomplish this goal? Can we save $5,000 without putting undue stress on our lives and on our budget, without taking money from the, the other balances that we have going on? Yeah. Um, yeah, and you made some excellent points there around if it's too much, then, and, it, and you still need a vacation, then just pick something that's less expensive. Yeah. You know, this is, a, this is a pretty hefty vacation. So is it going to be a bummer that you can't go on a cruise? Probably. But if you focus on that, then it's going to take the joy out of what you will enjoy otherwise. Focus on what you can do and enjoy what you have while you can. And when you do that, uh, find joy in what you have already. It actually gives you more energy inside to be able to accomplish other things, to free up the brain, to eliminate debt better, to be able to achieve other goals in financial wellness that will then allow you to come back and reevaluate that idea and consider going on a cruise at a later time. Yeah, and at this point in achievable and maybe in the measurable stage, it might be a good time to look at, okay, you're not just saying I need 3,000 and and, and 2,000 on these dates. It's like, how are we gonna get there? Yeah. Do I need to put away $200 bi-weekly starting now in order to arrive there? Yes. And is that, an attainable goal. Can I reduce my current budget by $200 a week, if that's the right number, to get to these numbers, to these milestones? Yeah. Um, So that's going to be a a key component of this is, 
You're not just going to magically have this money on these dates unless you, you know, make a plan to get there. And again, it has to be achievable in a way that's not going to destroy you. Yeah, so some of the things that I know my friend does is she scrimps and saves on her food budget. She has a yeah. has this food budget and she works to look for sales and to buy the maybe the cheaper cut of meat and things like that that will allow her to save more money in her pocket and to divert that to her travel plans budget instead. Exactly. Um, then that brings us to the R in SMART, which is relevant. Not a super applicable part of the acronym here, because of course, these goals are relevant to the, to the goal. <laughs> like, well, I guess or the, in, in the relevant would be, does it fit in your budget? Are you thinking big of, I want to go to live in Dubai for like two months? <laughs> Where Dubai, we know, is rather expensive. That or, would be not achievable, I think, yes. for most people. Yeah. Re relevant would be something like, I have a goal to be financially free. And am, is my specific goal here to save $5 a week going to help me there? It's not, it's sort of relevant, but it's not enough. Like, it's a, it's, it's a drop in the bucket and it's not going to be enough. Yeah. The R is more relevant to other goals that are not financial related, but still makes sense. And then finally, the T is what? Time bound, which we discussed that. By June, we were going to have the 3,000, and by October, we're gonna have the extra 2,000. Exactly, it can't just be, I need $5,000. We need it by these milestone yeah. dates. And along with that is like, okay, how are we getting there? It's again, that $200 per yeah. bi-weekly or whatever the right balance is. So you might look at your budget then, which is calendar budget has that great ability to give you that long term look. You can say at this date, I'm going to have so much extra money and look at that with this high low indicator turned on in calendar budget. I can see that miraculously we're going to have an extra seven hundred dollars in February. Where did that come from? This is amazing. What can I do with that? And you look forward a few months. Okay, that went down the next month and went down the next month after. So I won't move $700 over to the travel plans in February, but we were down to 500 in the next couple of months. So I'll move 500 over into travel plans instead. Exactly. Once you have figured out your goal and made sure that it is a smart goal with all of these different components, it's time to take that goal, which is probably just going to be a sentence like, I'm going to save for a Caribbean cruise on November 21st, and I'll need $3,000 on this date and $5,000 on this date. That's your SMART goal. Great. Now you need to make a plan to get there. And that's where that, you know, is it $200, $200 every biweekly? What's the right cadence of savings to get to where you want to be? Yeah. Um, and that... So how, how can we do that? Because for most people, they just don't have $200 laying around bi-weekly. So what are some tactics we can use to get, to get there? How can we plan that out? Uh, things we would do is we would eliminate some of the expenses yeah. that we really don't need. So maybe our groceries, we reduce that budget uh, or eliminate some of other expenses like we wouldn't regularly make like an extra mortgage payment or something if it was smart to do that yeah if you're putting a trip in place of mortgage payment i think i would stick with the mortgage payment well you need to make your that's not a question you have I mean, to make the mortgage extra payment, mortgage payment. but the extra mortgage payment yeah i would say you could eliminate an extra mortgage payment at the end of the day there's only two things you can do to adjust your your savings or your income it's like you, you reduce your expenses or increase your income. Yeah. So if you can increase income, great. That's a fantastic way to do it. If you can work a little bit of overtime, if you can work more hours, if you have a part-time job or hobby that you can monetize, yep. that, again, that's not gonna stress you out too much. Or sell off a few things that you are yep. extras around your house that you just need to get rid of and declutter. Exactly, great, great yep. example there. And then reducing your expenses, as you mentioned, is those are the ways to do it. Yeah. Um, Maybe there's alternatives for if you're going to celebrate a birthday, let's do something that isn't going to cost instead. We'll have that time together and go do photography 
uh, have some fun in, in nature and have do some photography together. Yeah. Something like that. Just you're together. Exactly. And it, it can also be diverting funds a, a little bit where possible. And just be careful doing this because the funds that you currently have allocated to savings are probably there for a reason. So if you're diverting things, just make sure you reevaluate what was the original thinking that the funds were going into these places in yeah. the first place. So again, I'm assuming that at this point you have a fully funded emergency fund because that's definitely a priority over planning a vacation. Um, if you were just putting money into long-term savings, mm -hmm. I wouldn't totally cut that off, but maybe you can take a portion of that long-term savings and divert it to a short-term vacation fund mm -hmm. while you're still putting some of that money into long-term savings. Um, if you're not saving at all, this is where things like increasing your income or reducing your expenses would come into play. Or a short-term investment that could earn some extra interest on it. Yeah. Um, most investments that are short-term won't help. <laughs> not very much. one-year uh, investments are not going to yield yeah. very much at all. But maybe you decide there's a major thing coming up. Like for us... Uh, 50 years of marriage or 50th birthday or something like not 50 25 years of marriage and 50th birthdays kind of almost coincide within a few years of each other and we figured yeah. we would plan a trip for them yeah so that's a few years off still and we figured start planning for that now exactly once you have your smart goal once you have a plan worked out now it's time to start working the goal you got to track your progress mm-hmm Again, that's where calendar budget is an excellent tool, but if you're not using calendar budget, then make sure you're tracking it either on paper or on your spreadsheet or in whatever tool that you're using. But calendar budget makes it really easy to make sure you're on track. You just reconcile with reality, make sure that you, you can look forward into that future date and make sure that that fund is gonna be funded as it ought to be. And that's gonna put you in the place that you need to be. Mm -hmm. Finally, What's the final step? You gotta reevaluate things from time to time because inevitably problems occur and you need to not only review that progress by tracking it, but you may have to make adjustments. And make sure you have all the details covered too as you're making your goal. That there was one goal we made early on in our marriage. We thought we wanna be debt free by the end of 2010. And well, miracles happen. We did it. We thought, how can we do this? How can we grow calendar budget? It was an unexpected way. Yeah. Maybe we weren't very specific. We needed to be more specific in our goal to be debt free because yeah. at that point we decided that we would move over to renting instead of owning the house. That the extra funds, because we had purchased the house cash in the first place. Uh, so we were able to use those extra I can pay gift card, I can pay credit, I can pay anything you like. I can pay cash, I can pay check, I can pay wire transfer, I can pay gift card, I can pay credit, I 